gospel of Jesus Christ is the solution to the woes of man. How much of it you know, determines how well you reign in life. Join us. At Shepherd's Love Worldwide, opposite top radio, Circle Accra, as the man of God, Apostle Johnsburg, takes us through sound teaching, and instruction in the word. Shepherd's Love Worldwide, making Christ prominent, in our generation. Salvation in Christ Jesus is salvation you can bank your hopes on. So number three, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a blessing. The blessing that God has given to us. The Holy Spirit is a blessing that God has given to us. The Holy Spirit. The blessing of the Holy Spirit. Now, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit or let me say the operations of the Holy Spirit were seen or can be seen in the Old Testament. The operations of the Holy Spirit can be seen in the sense that the Holy Spirit will come around people, God's choices people. The Holy Spirit will come upon them. The Holy Spirit will come with them. And then in certain cases, the Holy Spirit even entered some of them. God's choices servants. The Holy Spirit entered them for a moment and then when the, whatever work they needed to do was done, he what? He departed. He went away. So the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, you see his works. You see his movement in the sense that he comes around God's people. He comes upon God's people like Gideon. The Holy Spirit came upon him. You understand? Like Samson you see that the Holy Spirit comes around them, comes upon them, and then some of the choices servants, the Holy Spirit enters them for a particular assignment to be done. Then as the assignment is completed, he goes away. So you see the Holy Spirit and his movements in the Old Testament. When you are reading the Old Testament, sometimes you see him called the angel of God's presence. The angel of God's presence. The angel of God's presence presence. Or you see him introduced as the spirit. The spirit. You see it in the Old Testament often. In Genesis 1, he said, the earth was without form and void. Then the spirit of God hovered over the waters. Then the spirit of God hovered over the waters. Then the spirit of God hovered. So, at times you see him being called the spirit. The spirit of God. The angel of God's presence. Then at times you see him being called the angel of God. The angel of God. The angel of God. Anytime you are reading your Old Testament and you see an angel of God is any other angel. The Old Testament. When you see an angel of God. But however, when you see the angel of God, this is the Holy Spirit. Understand? His, he, his let me say it in this way. His operations were informal. In the Old Testament. His operations were informal. So he has all these names. It was now in the New Testament. That Jesus formally introduced. The ministry of the Holy Spirit. Jesus now introduced. The ministry and the person. Of the Holy Spirit. The ministry and the person. Of the Holy Spirit. Was introduced in the New Testament. By Jesus. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Let's read from verse 15. John chapter 14 from verse 15. Jesus now introduced the ministry and the person of the Holy Spirit formally to us in the New Testament. So that means that Jesus now showed us who he is and what he does. In those times... I'm sure some of them didn't even know that the Spirit of God had come upon them. They just go and then destroy whatever they have to destroy. Do whatever they have to do. Then he leaves them. So, what I'm saying is in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit comes and goes. Comes and goes. He comes for a while and then when whatever is done, the assignment is done, he will go. You remember David prayed in Psalm 51, Take not your spirits away from me. Take not your spirit away from me. Now, in the New Testament, a prayer like that is not valid. 
per the scriptures. Because Jesus now introduced him as our helper who is going to be with us throughout the times. You understand? This is why we teach the scriptures. We labor in the word. His ministry was now formally introduced. In John 14 verse 15, Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, so the proof of your love for Jesus is our what? You can't just do math talk. Math talk. Oh, I love the man. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Ah, verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. That he may abide with you forever. So this one makes take not your spirit away from me invalid now. Because you can see it for yourself. He will be where? Now, now he will not come and go. Now his ministry is said that he has to now come and stay and stay with you forever. Now he says, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper. Which means that Jesus himself is a helper. Now he's introducing another, the Greek word is alos for another, A-L-L-O-S, alos for, for another. It means another of the same kind. That's why he himself is a helper and he's bringing another person. The Greek word is alos for another, and then helper is parakletos, parakletos. If you have heard in English, paraclete. Have you heard the English word before? Paraclete. Oh, you have no this is your first time hearing it. Anyway. In the Old Testament, they introduced the spirit as a wind. So if you have ever seen this word, the ruach. R-U-A-C-H. The ruach. They, they, they understand he is the, the, the wind of God. The breath of God. The wind of God. The wind of God. Jesus said the same in John 3. Anyone that is born of the Spirit said, as the wind goes and you can't see where it's going and where it's coming from, so is anyone who is born of the Spirit. It's like wind. It's like wind. There are several connotations or things that speak of the Spirit, like, like wine. Jesus said, Lo, come to the waters, you that test. Come and buy of me wine and milk. He was talking of the Spirit. The Spirit several of that now jesus says i'll give you another helper that he may abide with you this is where jesus now introduced who the holy spirit is so he's what he's a helper so now the teaching that heaven helps those who help themselves cannot fit in here because a helper has been released to help us i'm going easy i'm going slowly then i'll begin to build Heaven helps those who help themselves cannot work here because there's, there's a standby. Somebody has been put beside you as a standby by God, as your helper. And this man has been commissioned. I said he will live with you forever. Can we have it in a modern verse? So the Holy Spirit is our helper. Okay. It means the helper must help. <laughs> That's what it means. And I'll ask the Father and he will give you another Savior. The Holy Spirit of truth. Who will be to you a friend just like me. And he will never leave you. So anyone that comes around you and says the Holy Spirit has left this guy. The Holy Spirit has departed from this guy. The guy is living an Old Testament life in a New Testament. Because Jesus himself said that he will not leave. Now see, the world, this is the other verse. Okay, let's, let's, let's read the NKJV like that, please. So that I can do more. I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Uh-huh. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive. So another name he calls the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. He says the world cannot. The world cannot receive. Whom the world cannot receive. Because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. 
the spirit of truth whom the world cannot cannot I always say it when you look to the world to fellowship with God you will be in error when you look at how the world is he said the world cannot receive him the world can you see the Holy Spirit is our competitive advantage the Holy Ghost is our competitive advantage the Holy Ghost is our competitive advantage now understand this for a long time the Holy Spirit has been taught as a dove so the guy is walking he wants a dove over his head because he read in the scripture that Jesus was baptized by John and then the spirit came in the form of a dove so as he when he when he, when he designs a program he puts a small dove at the corner and he said that's the Holy Spirit put a small dove on the on the corner of the fly you can see maybe he can lift his hand and then there's a dove but here we are seeing that he, he is a person the person of the Holy Spirit now many Christians need an introduction to someone who lives in them so you can hear a Christian say and a BB catcher he said these ones are not matured ones is the mature these ones are not matured ones so and a BB BB catcher me say BB catcher me say mommy in Koha I was going to pick a car and then something told me that if he was he was he was up in his fellowship game enough you know is the voice of the Holy Spirit saying go here don't go here it's too easy to know it's too easy it's too easy to know the Bible said those that are led is to be led is not to lead is to be led okay let's continue the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him but you know him the Holy Ghost is what is who has been assigned to the church look for he dwells with you as we progress things will become clearer for he dwells with you and will be in you because at this time they were yet to receive him in acts his ministry fully so Jesus said he will be in, in you verse 18 I will not leave you orphans I'll come to you uh -huh. a little while okay let's let's jump over that and read verse 25 verse 25 and 26 so Jesus now in that that's the first time the apostles are now hearing of someone or something called the Holy Spirit all this world they don't know they are just there they are just seeing Jesus and Jesus says oh I'm going but I'll not leave you as orphans there's another helper I'll give to you so instantly we, we go there and know the Holy Spirit is our helper now what how do you use somebody who has been assigned to help how do you use him you 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 ask him help me that is helper that's his name so asking the helper for help or to help you is not a sin you are actually making him do his mandate many christians have not been taught to encourage the work of the holy spirit now one day one day some years ago i learned this to always always because from the scriptures i know he's always with me i don't have to feel he's with me i have to know jesus said he will be with you always i have to know not waiting for goosebumps when when they are singing and i feel some goosebumps i say hey and they soon soon will. those are baby christians so come out of those things those are baby christians because they can sing a song no goosebumps he is still there he is there he's not there because of goosebumps hey, and i feel some you know those feelings we walk by faith not by sight those are baby stuff throw baby things i will throw the feeding bottle away and come for meat throw the feeding bottle off and now come for meat it shows you are come for grilled chicken it now shows you are growing now one of the ways you can encourage the, the ministry of the holy spirit is this if you have noticed it most men of god do it a lot like pastor chris thank you holy spirit it like thank you holy spirit like as i'm ministering to you now oh thank you holy spirit you, you are encouraging his work 
you are encouraging his work you see that maybe he comes oh thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit you are you are allowing him to have his way oh thank you jesus thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit thank you holy that's how you allow the helper into your life the forefront of your life you see it looks too simple ah that's yes how do you want to do it it's his work to help not your work let's continue these things i've spoken to you while being present with you uh -huh. but the helper the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name now the holy spirit is here in the name of jesus the holy spirit is here on the account of jesus the holy spirit is here for the full backing he is here on the weight of the authority that is in the name of jesus now everything god is doing god is doing in this world now god is doing in the authority that is in the name of jesus as he said the helper the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name the holy ghost is not here to do what he likes he is here to do the bidding of jesus the holy ghost is here to do the bidding of jesus look he will teach you all things oh i said many christians need an introduction to somebody who has been assigned commissioned fully programmed to be with them and to help them he said he will teach you how many things do you know that it's possible too much for the holy spirit to teach you chemistry oh <laughs> it's, too, it's too easy you may think hey holy spirit dear. you know in your mind you have church life social life that's why you are not growing you are not growing because you have church life you have social life you have financial life you have I, have I only have one life one life for jesus is all i have there's no you have segregated your life so oh, this one is my this life this one here is my so and so life this one oh it's my personal life the approach many people have to the things of god that is why they are not growing last week i was telling you that i'm i'm growing in the work and then I'm seeing a lot of things. And as I see certain things, now I don't rush again. I don't rush about many things. People say, ah, pastor, it's like you are not enthusiastic. Oh, no, no. It's not enthusiasm. It's not enthusiasm. As you grow, you become more experienced. It, next month, in the month of May, I would have been working with God for 10 years. Hard working. 10 solid years searching the scriptures hard 20th of may searching the scriptures searching searching night and day looking so that now we can even crack jokes with scripture which was not so before it's amazing all by god's grace look he will teach you all things ah the holy ghost is not just a, a helper he's also a teacher you see what what many christians are doing is this let me give you an example it's like meeting somebody who is experienced in an area you are now starting out in let's say i meet a senior man of god who has been in ministry for 50 years or 40 years and then as i meet him i begin to talk plenty and allow him to talk less once he says he raises a topic I'm, I collect the topic and say, oh yes, oh last time, cry this last. One day I was invited for a program somewhere in Medina. And when I was done preaching, I was, I was laying hands on the people. And I went to lay hand on this man at the back. I went to the back, I put my hand, bah. When I put my hand on the man, bah, I was falling down. They had to now... <laughs> they had to now hold me. Me that was laying hand on the person. They had to now hold. I had not built stamina. I was now just. I was falling down. Then the man held me like this. He said, Father, I call him in. <laughs> that, now I went home. When I went back, I took my Bible. I said, No. I have to set the scriptures. I said, God, that thing that happened that day. 
Never again. Never again. Never. I put my hand on the person's head. Bah. It was me that was falling down. The man was standing. And he helped me. He said, Father, I call him in. People have worked with God. Who, hey, there are men in the city. Who, let nobody lie to you. There are men. There are men. When they say bless, it will bless. There are men. They don't need to do much. They have worked with this Holy Spirit so much that their words carry power. You can say, my business is not moving. Things are not going. They look at you. They say, it is well with you. That's all. It is well with you. 24-hour miracle. It is well with you one week. Something will just come to you yourself. You testify my life was not like this. He is the teacher. He's not just a helper. He's there to also teach. What we are doing most of the time is that we don't allow the, the man to teach. We are talking about many things. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yesterday, yeah, yeah. You last week, brother. You last two weeks. And yeah, you know, I need to go to this place and I need to go to the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yesterday, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, fine, fine. Good, good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all. Do you know, there are some Christians, eh? They approach even to prayer. And the word is amazing. They, it's, prayer is like a normal thing. Like, oh, it's just 20 minutes. Let's just pray. Let's just pray. And they pray and they don't expect God to speak. They don't expect this man to speak. They just, Shantomaya, Shantomaya, Shantomaya. That's all. There are some Christians who even open their Bible to study. They don't take a notebook. They don't have a diary. They don't have a pen. They just read the Bible like this. You know, there are traits that unknowingly you build and you, you will hinder the ministry of the Spirit in your life. Now, assuming you are studying your Bible and you have a notebook and a pen, it means you trust that he's going to what? You trust that he's going to what? He's going to, he's going to speak to you. He's going to teach you something. He's going to teach you something. Imagine you wake up before you begin your day. You go out for your business, your school, whatever. I say, dear Holy Spirit, I trust your mighty presence in my life. As I go through my day, this day, show me the place to go. Show me the way. Show me whatever I need to do today. Take charge of my day. In Jesus' name, amen. If, compare how that day goes to a day where you just take your bag and rush out with plenty of lipstick and makeup. And the nicest of perfume. Compare how that day goes. And then compare a day where any five, ten minutes you are saying, Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, blessed Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you, thank you for my day. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for my day. 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 Compare that to a day where you were just at the back. Listen to this more. Listen to this one small, do this small, do a bit of this, watch funny videos. And that's all. The day ends and you come home. You see, somebody has been mandated by Jesus to teach us. He says, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I what? I said to you. One day, I used to say this a lot. I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. Oh, I've forgotten, I've forgotten, I've forgotten. One day the Holy Spirit said to me, you don't have the spirit of forgetfulness. You don't have the spirit of forgetfulness. Because, you see, one of the work he has also been commissioned to do is to bring remembrance. He will bring remembrance of the things Jesus has said. Ah, then he can bring remembrance of meetings I've had with people and other things. He can bring, he can remind me. He can remind me of things. He can remind me of things. Have you ever set an alarm with the Holy Spirit before? Who has tried it? You didn't have a phone alarm. You just said, dear Holy Spirit, wake me up at 4 tomorrow. Have you, have you tried it before? I said, we need an introduction to somebody who already lives in us. His, his, his work, he has his work cut out. And what is his work? To help. To teach. To remind. That's his work. His work is to help to teach and to remind. Teaching all things. Teaching all things. You see, there is no anointing for a good marriage. The Holy Ghost can teach you to have a good marriage. The Holy Ghost can teach you anything. I said, 
I share this story most of the time. One day, but this, these spectacular things don't happen all the time. So what I'm about to say, go and study. If you're a student, sit down behind the book. Make time. Be disciplined enough to study. One day, actually, I was caught up in the work of ministry. You know, as a student, me, I was a part-time student and a full-time minister back on campus. Part-time student, full-time minister. When you see me in the class, when you see me, you say, hey, also, also. <laughs> also, also. Now, actually, instead of studying the book, I was in church, going for soul winning, going for this, going for that. And then we had an IA. In fact, we had an exam. I sat behind the paper. I couldn't learn much. It was this, this um, critical thinking. Modus, modus tollens. Modus what, what, what. I sat behind the paper and, oh Jesus, I had not learned some things. And we went and they put this thing there. And they said, answer it for 30 marks or 20 marks, like compulsory. And actually, I had not learned the thing. And I didn't know what to write. And I was just sitting there and I said, dear Holy Spirit, you know, I was going around doing this, your work. Please, if you don't help me in this moment, both of us will be disgraced. I put my head down and I just said this silent prayer. And I sat down. And I was answering the other questions I could. They were feeling and all that. But this major question, I didn't know anything about it. I had not read it. I just, you know, I was in a hurry. So, Charlie, you know that point in the exam where it's time, you just go, Udeshi. Mobesi besi. Mobesi besi. And then, so I was feeling the other ones. I'm telling you, what, this, this spectacular testimony don't happen all the time. So, if you're a student and you don't go and study. Now, I was feeling the other once I could do writing, writing, but this major question, I didn't have an idea. I had not read it. And I knew it carried a lot of marks. So I just said, Holy Spirit, the helper must help at this moment. Else <laughs> there, will be a, there will be a disaster. Now, as I was feeling the other one and all that, and I was almost about done, I saw a vision. In the exam hall, I was amazed. This is the first time something like that has happened to me in my life. I saw a vision in the exam hall, and then my very close friend, Pastor Charles, came to me in the vision. In the exam hall, came to me and brought a sheet of paper like this, and said, here is it. You will not believe. This, some of these things, they are stories. If it is you, and you are telling another person, it's like a story. Unless maybe we get to heaven and you see that, Charlie, a man for Ninja, Miana, and Tia, and some of their things, it doesn't make sense. In the exam hall, he came to me with a sheet of paper like this. He said, this is it. And I began to write. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I so remember. Jesus. <laughs> ha! Charlie, I didn't know anything like this. Every time I used to hear men of God preach and they say, and the supernatural, and the supernatural. And me, I'll be thinking, what, what, is, what is all this? And I'll be thinking, what was this? Because when I hear the thing, how do they, they even pronounce it? They say supernatural. Super. So I just think, Charlie, at the idea. I had never experienced anything like that before. Charlie, how I wrote that day, I even not doing some of the feelings crowd were wrong. <laughs> some of the feelings. And since that day, I've never had a testimony like that for any exam again. It's when I go and say that I don't know. If I know, I know. If I don't know, I don't know. I just shade D and go. But it was an amazing day for me. Then another time in 2015, that was the time there were a lot of issues with the light and all that, if you remember. So on campus, we used to go off this, da, 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 da. And I needed to meet Pastor Charles so that we could do some things. My phone was off. And he too, if you know him very well, his, his phone, even when there is light, his phone will never be 100% charged. Never. Even as it's light like this. I've never met somebody like that before, like who consistently, every time when you see them, their phone is 10%. 10%, 20, 10, 20. It's almost going, oh, Charlie, Charlie, make her, make her, <laughs> make her kick arms more and we go. So if my phone was off, 
I always keep a charge. But it was because there was no light for a long time. And I needed to meet him. And I just said, Holy Spirit, find a way for us to meet. I'm going to the Sabbath field. Find a way to bring him there at this time so that we can meet. So I went to the Sabbath field. There is this part. UG Hostel, um, they do a lot of weddings there. Guest house, something. I went to sit on a stone and I was just waiting by the roadside. I was just sitting there waiting. In about an hour or so, here is Pastor Charles coming. Walking to the field. That was not our prayer time. Walking to the field. And he comes and says, Oh, I'm going to go to the field. So, I'm going to go to the at this time, even though he ran him back, him, remember bonfire keke. And I said, ah, "Boy, my friend, wow, boy, sweet job." <laughs> it's amazing how the Holy Spirit works. It's amazing. Sometimes you may think, "Oh, this is a trivial matter," but it's a big deal for him because he has his, his he has his work cut out. And I said, his work is to help. Ah, how do you help yourself when there is a helper? It doesn't make sense. It's pride. You are being too proud to accept his help. When somebody has been commissioned as your helper, the helper, you know, so heaven helps those who help themselves. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. The helper is here to help. He's here to what? To teach. It's Jesus said he will teach you all things. And I said the Holy Ghost can teach you difficult subjects. The Holy Ghost can explain. You see, he knows the terrain of the earth very well. Because before creation was even made, he is the first man. The Bible said, and the Spirit of the Lord hovered over the water. He knows the terrain of this earth very well. The Holy Ghost can explain things you can't find on Google. The Holy Ghost can explain questions when you ask your parents. They will say, hey, jai, jai, hey, empenyinsem, empenyinsem. The Holy Ghost can explain hard truths to you. The Holy Ghost can explain difficult things and easy ones to you. The Holy Ghost can give you an understanding. You see, the issue is, are you, are you ready to learn? Because here is a teacher, and then your response to a teacher is your willingness to what? To learn. Your response to a teacher is your willingness to learn. But amazingly, we don't have the time. We don't have the time to learn. Last time I was telling you that Moses was with God for 40 days, 40 nights. In our generation, that would be so boring. You mean he was with God, no Instagram. He was just with God alone. Alone with God. Oh, no, no, that, that, that's not good enough. What kind of John life is that? You and God. Your response to a teacher is your readiness to learn. Your readiness to learn. So I give you an example that most of us, we want to teach somebody who is a teacher. You want to teach the teacher. You want to teach the guy. You Holy Spirit, Osanka, who you say? Osanka. Look, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. The Holy Ghost reminds you of the words of Jesus. He said he will bring all things. The Holy Ghost will bring a word. He can remind. Let's look at the next verse. Peace I live with you, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I think that, that's enough. Let's, let's read John 15. John 15, 26. John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verse 26. But when the Helper comes, whom I send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will what? So the Holy Ghost comes to testify of Jesus. So the Holy Ghost will not come and say, oh, throw the Bible away. And he say, take your PMP. Take your junior graphic. The Holy Ghost will never do that. The Holy Ghost will never. Now, one time some people went for a meeting and then they said there was a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And these things happen all the time, even now. 
Even now, there are people who go for meetings and then they say, one person, there's a manifestation of the spirit on one person. Right. Then the person comes and now says, you, I'll kill you. I'll kill you because of what you did. Last week, you remember what, I'll kill you. And everybody is afraid. Some people went for a meeting and then they said the Holy Spirit manifested. And then the person, somebody was going around and was now doing this. Holiness, 2%. <laughs> Holiness, 5%. I think the highest person go about 20. 20%. You see, instantly, instantly, if we know the scriptures, we should know this is a familiar spirit. If you know the scriptures, you, you, the Holy Ghost, he, like he, he has his work cut out. He knows what he's here to do. The Holy Spirit will never break the scriptures. Never. He is here to testify of Jesus. What did Jesus come to do? It means the Holy Ghost is the one who will keep reminding us of the finished work of Jesus. He will, because he's here to testify about the man. He will keep drawing our minds back to it. What Jesus has done. The benefits, the glories of the cross. He will keep laying emphasis on it. He will keep laying emphasis on it. See, they now go say, all these meetings we now wait for. Mema, Mema. May my most familiar spirit, familiar spirit, may my one new year, may Baby Kumo, then everybody, hey, now Messi will be queer, you see. You have to be firm, you have to be firm on the word, you have to be very firm, very, very firm. You see, when it comes to the word, and Paul said, even if an angel should come and preach another gospel, let it let him be accursed. Let him be accursed. It's like you say, hey, I received a prophecy. If it's not if it's not based on the word, we reject it. You know, say, oh, is this prophet that if we reject it, we reject it. If you don't live like that, you won't grow. Everything will enter. Everything will come around you. you say, oh, say, oh, the Holy Spirit. Oh, the Holy Spirit. Now, ah, the Holy Spirit said, Hey, if you don't know, you are like chaff. Hey, you are like you are like rubbish. You remember they said some people went for all night and they said the Holy Spirit said they are all like garbage. Are they all night? They are all like garbage. And I'm sure some believe this. Some be like, oh, God. do we pray? Oh, God. As I'm like, garbage, Father, clean me. <laughs> clean me. Clean me. They are all like garbage. Some may be weeping and shaking. If I were to be in a meeting like that, once they said, I'm going home. Me, I'm going home. Once they say that, oh, if, you see, it may appear to somebody like you, you are some will. I will not give my ear to that. I take my bag, I'm going home. Quickly, I just, man of God. Later. I have to, no, I, I need to go and sleep. I need to go and sleep, get some energy so we can do more work. See, understand how he works. He is here. As we are, we are talking, we are seeing what he is here to do. We have seen that he is here to help, to teach, to remind, to remind, to remind. You see, cultivate the habit. You, when you know you have a standby, why will you now be saying, oh, I forgot, I forgot. You can say, Holy Spirit, remind me. That's, these are the ways you encourage his work in your life. When you know somebody has been put on standby to bring you into remembrance, don't cultivate the habit of saying, I forgot. Oh, I forgot this. I forgot this. You can now train yourself to always say, Holy Spirit, remind me. Remind me. You see, practice his presence. Practice it. He's always with me. He's always. That's how to practice it. He's always with me. He's with me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for my day. Thank you for my business. Thank you for my school. Thank you for my career. Thank you. Oh, thank you for a good day today. You are practicing His presence. Don't you don't wait for goosebumps. Hey, how they were singing, and I felt 
I said, those are baby stuff. Throw the feeding bottle away. Those are baby, baby stuff. He's here to testify of Jesus. So, if we claim that the Holy Spirit manifested in a meeting, did we see the testimony of Jesus in that meeting? If not, we have to reject it. Because this, the Bible said, several spirits have gone into the world. Several spirits. And even says we should even test to know which one is from God. Because there are spirits that act like God. But it is not from God. Have you not seen somebody holding the Bible yet? It's like something is wrong with their mind. Have you not seen it before? Maybe on the road, the guy is opening the Bible. But I say, I you know, like the all canon. You see how I'm teaching you the word like this. Whatever he's saying, you can't make meaning from it. He opens the Bible and says, you see, and God said to Abraham, and Abraham did this, and Abraham did this. And, and then Lot did this, and then, and then, and then Esther, and this, and then, and then. it looks like you can see the person, it looks like this guy, something is wrong with his mind. Because whatever he's preaching, there's no meaning, nothing. It looks like he's stressed. Because there are spirits like that, that come around you. There are some, they are living in delusions that they can come and say, God told them. He said, God told me today. God told me today. One of the things that people use these days, people use these days to clamp everybody down, is God said. God said to me. God said to me. You know, when, when somebody comes and says, God said, we can't question again. That's what, I'm very careful about this thing. If I hear from God, that one day I'll tell you. But if I don't hear from God and I feel we should do this, oh, I'm telling you, telling you, what do you think? Let's do this. This is what I feel. But some have even used God said, God said in relationships. And the other partner cannot talk. You see, God said. But if God said it, why is it that it didn't work out? Because anything God does is good. If it's God, we'll see results. He said, God said. You know, one of the most abusive relationships are the ones that they bring God into. I'm telling you, me and me, I'll tell you the truth. One of the most abusive relationships, whether men of God and the church, or men of God and their wives, people of God and their wives, that most of them, they say God said, then they use it to batter the other person. And you can't talk because it's the will of God. It's the will of God. They say God said, you want to say God said, you can't argue again. And you can see this. You see, if God said it, and we'll see something. We'll see something. At any time I have told you that God said we should do this, have you not seen a result? Let me give you an example. There was a time in our church, many, many of our brethren, most of my, my guys were doing national service. And they were about to finish their national service. They were about to finish their national service. So you know what happens is that at that time it's like student church and they are doing national service, they are about to finish it means they need to get a job because you can't do service and come and stay at home you need to get a job and then you can kick on from there and then so I went into prayer for some time before they finish their service it's good to have a pastor who is, is very good it's very good it's very very good very, very good. I went into prayer months before they finished their service. That father, they are about to finish their service. What's the next level? What do we do? Where do we go from here? And the Lord told me something. The Lord told me that find one day in the month and gather everybody and go into prayer. Find one day in the month. Gather everybody and go into prayer. I'll prove myself. So I came to the church and I told them, young men and young women, this is what God has told me. So which day do you think we can gather to pray? And those times we used to go to what? Legon. Le Miracle Center. And then we chose, I think, what? The second, second Saturday of the month. So second Saturday of the month, whatever you are doing, you have to stop. And then you go. And then, thank God, because of training, eh, we don't have people giving excuses. I have to do this. Come and do this. You, you, uh, my mother said, my father said, when an instruction has come, the guy goes, I'm not interested. There are some people that are not interested in church, anything. And then they wonder why they don't see testimony. 
And then they wonder why they don't they don't see any testimony. It's just there. When they say, let's go for this meeting, mm, I'm not interested, I'm not interested. Me, I don't have time. And they are not doing anything. They are just there. We have had a lot of meetings. A lot of, there was a time we, we met every day, Monday to Sunday. Man, there was a time we met every day on the park, Monday to Sunday. What are, what are you doing? We can be on the park I'm preaching and then they are playing Champions League. You now hear, go! And we too, we are on the path. Glory! Glory! One day, one day, when you see that certain things are working in the lives of some of the people, then you now say you don't understand. You don't, you, who made you understand? What do you want to say? I, I don't understand why. I don't understand. I don't understand. You, what, what, what do you understand? It's amazing. I said, well, now they, I said, my Bible is gentle. Be. Gentle, two hours, and we close. We go home. That one cry, we have to beg you. We have to beg you to be in church. So we went into prayer at the Miracle Center every second Saturday of the month. I think two hours, right? Went into two hour prayer. Is that? 10 to 12, two hour prayer. Oh, that's we have testimonies from that place. Testimony, you saw that it was like it was like now I say I grow. We pray about this thing every time we have come together. And I said, God said, let's pray about this. We always have had a testimony, always, always. So you have to actually be sure that God said it, because some also use that to clamp other people down. Somebody now comes, he doesn't want anybody to talk against the decision. So he said, God said. You know, God to you. It's so brought out. Not because of me, cash. Some use it in relationship too. God said, let's go and buy this house. God said, marry me. Hey! <laughs> anybody that will come to me, maybe you come to me in the office. I say, you say you are getting married. I say, ah, why, why do you want to marry this lady? Or why do you want to marry this brother? I said, God said. I said, leave the office. I said, leave the office. Please, quickly. Quickly get out. Quickly get out. God said, quickly get out. Quickly, quickly, quick. Pack your things and just go. God said, go and marry him. When, when the marriage now breaks down, do we then blame God? You know, people don't, some people don't want to take responsibility for their actions. So they now say, God said it. God said it. Well, we can see that, Charlie. God has not sanctioned this thing. Some are in things that are struggling, things that, that are some way. If they can't come out, they say, God said it. God said it. It's like somebody once came to me and said, Pastor, I think I like this person. I said, Really? He said, Yes. And I said, oh, Okay. But have you fought with the person before? He said, No. I said, Let's end the conversation. Let's end the conversation. He said, I said, As the more I'm growing, the more I'm getting experience. At first, I now say, oh, oh, that's nice. Now, there are questions I will ask you. Based on the answer, you, I say, Leave. Leave, leave. You want to marry somebody you have not fought with before? You've not had a disagreement to see their, their reaction to issues. Oh, then, oh, yeah, have a fresh. Oh, yeah, have a oh, yeah, newcomer, baby. Because when you see how they handle things, you can project how when issues come, they will behave. You can now tell, hey, if the guy is annoyed and he can be destroying things, you can say, what am I getting myself into? <laughs> because you may come home one day, all your TV, everything is destroyed. You know, say, and you are waiting for you at the gate with a club, a golf club like this. You know, say, where is this man? Let me break his head. One small disagreement, they take bottle and break it. God, they say, hey, for here? So, he says, when the helper comes, whom I shall send from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds, the Holy Ghost is from God. He says, he will testify of me. One of the things the Holy Spirit does is to talk about Jesus. So, the Holy Spirit is like, you know, in our time, 
in our time there's a, a phrase we use now like socially they say this person is a hype man maybe they, you go for a wedding and you see somebody hey the freshest couple that this 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 it's like he's hyping the holy ghost is also here to what hype jesus because he said he will, he would testify of me he is here to hype jesus to us he is here to make us see more and more of jesus one, one sign of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is that we'll see Jesus. We'll see Jesus being what? Exalted. Jesus being exalted. So, now, any meeting you have ever been in, or going for, or will be in, and they said the Holy Spirit has done this, and it doesn't agree with the testimony of Jesus, which is the gospel, run away. Run away. Run away. For example, you are in a meeting, they said the Holy Spirit has come, He said everybody is a sinner. When you know you are born again, you now quickly look for your bag. If you have a baby there at the back, you go for your baby. You take your bag. You now leave quickly. If you are there with your wife, you now go for your wife and go for your kids. <laughs> Ishmael lost. <laughs> so, one of the, the things we see about the Holy Spirit is that He promotes Jesus. Let, let's continue. I want to do more today. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 6 to verse 16. 1 Corinthians 2 from verse 6 to verse 16. Brothers, remember this I'm saying in this service. That how can we have a helper and you don't want him to help you? It doesn't make sense. His job is Mr. Helper. So everything what you now do is that helper, help me. Help every day of your life, help me. Help me. Help me in my career. Help me in my marriage. Help me in my finances. Trust me, the Holy Ghost knows where the opportunities in the city are. He knows where the opportunity. I said he knows the terrain very well. The Holy Spirit knows who to connect you with to make you a success in whatever venture you are in. The Holy Spirit, we, the whole world can line up before the Holy Spirit and he will say something about all of us. He knows everything about you. The Holy Ghost knows you more than you know yourself. The Holy Spirit knows you very well. Very well. Very well. He knows, you, he knows everything about you. He knows what you like, what you don't like. The Holy Spirit knows what you like, what you don't like. The Holy Spirit knows what you like and what you don't like. Serious. What you like, everything. He knows your heart. He knows everything you think. He knows your taste. He knows you. He knows you. He knows you. Imagine not encouraging his work in your life. There are certain things you won't see. Certain decisions. You may make wrong decisions in so many things. Make wrong decisions. Recently, recently, Pastor B was telling the brethren that when you go to a hospital and they say they have, they have seen this about you, they have to remove it now, now, now. Run away. Tell them you are coming, you are coming and you use the washroom. And you want to use the washroom and run away. Because apparently they have done it to people and then some people are maimed because of some of these decisions. Some walk from the house, okay, went to the hospital, now they said they now found this in your body now. And they have to do something now, else you die. If you say, oh, doctor, doctor. Apparently they have a number of surgeries to make every year. So the alliances can be renewed. So as the doctor is working, you know, my year two, I got two more. So once you bring an issue, you now say, oh, let's prepare you for theater. Let's prepare you for theater. You'll be amazed at the, the wickedness in a man's heart. They now say, as he's walking, he say, December, bow. I was saying, here for surgeries. Miss my you too. So one person now comes with one small thing, they can just put medicine and so we have to cut it. We have to cut it. We have, because of the so so and so we are seeing, so we have to cut it. We have to now catch it quickly. You are in a fix. 
you don't know what to do. It's like you are at a crossroad. You have to make an important life decision. Sometimes the decision of who to marry is a big decision. You are a lady. Three guys at the same time. You don't know who to marry. Everybody is being nice. Everybody is being nice. You are a guy. Same thing. Ladies around you. Everybody is being nice. You, will you look at niceness? Will you look at niceness? Will you look at niceness? Oh, this one can dress well. This one can talk well. It may be possible that is not the one. You see, this is why you, I'm introducing you. Lean more on the helper. Lean on his help. Lean on his help. And I said, you encourage his work by allowing him. Now, when we are having meetings, we now say we invite the Holy Spirit into our midst. He is always there. He is always there. He doesn't need any invitation. Because the invitation he needed was given by Jesus. What we just read, Jesus now brought him in. What we now do is that we allow him to what? Have his way. Have your way. Have your way in this thing. Because sometimes with your emotions, some of the decisions you make for your life, you may feel, oh, let me take this part. Let me go into this. Let me go into this. Let me go. And you may miss it. You may miss it. I said, but the man, he knows you. He knows you very well. He can describe you. He can tell you who you are, what you like, what you don't like, what, where you should go, what decisions should happen. The Holy Ghost, who and who to connect you with. Who and who to connect your business with. He knows all those things. He knows everything. All knowing. All knowing. Holy Spirit. All knowing. All knowing. There are, there's one thing the Holy Spirit can tell you. And it will save years of stress. One day I almost got food poisoned. One day. Seriously. Since then. Since then, I don't go out and then they say, oh, man of God, this. if I'm not like that with you, I'm not eating your food. You may think, oh, what's training? Huh? Yeah, it's true. I mean, training. Huh? I've seen something. I've seen something. Like, maybe I may end up at the hospital or maybe something may even happen to me. Don't eat the food. When you go back, they will serve you this. Don't eat it. And we, we went back like a joke. What they will serve, they have saved it. Hey. They have saved it. They will save you this. No, no telephone, nothing. We went at the same thing. They have saved it. They have saved it. The money, he can show you things. And then you go like, ah, I've seen this day before. Who has had that experience? I've seen this day before. There are ways the Holy Ghost tries to stop us in our tracks. Because we are mostly busy. There are, there are some people, they are so busy during the day that they can't hear from God. Or they have to now sleep and dream. The, God, the only time God can now talk to them is when they are sleeping. Oh, dreams are very good. But there are some people, their, their day is so occupied, they don't have any time. Like, God can't interrupt you in the office and tell you do this. It's like his mind is not there. His mind is on something else. The only time God can now actually have time with the guy is when the guy is now. <laughs> That's the only time. That's the only time. That's the only time. You see, the Holy Ghost is here to help you live a soft life. Help her. Help her. Help her. Help her. If you want soft life, then you have to lean on the man. Lean on him. Lean on his help. Look, however, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. Next verse, please. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Mm hmm which none of the rulers of this world knew, none of the rulers of this age knew. 
For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If they had known what was coming, they would not have killed Jesus. That's what the Bible is saying. Next verse. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. So the things God has prepared for his lovers. He says, I has not seen it. Ear has not heard it. Neither has it entered there. It means it has not even been revealed to anybody. A hint of it has not even been dropped in anybody's heart. Next verse. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. So one thing the Holy Ghost does is to take what God wants to do for us and show it to us. That's one of the works he does. It, one of the works he does is to show us what God has planned for us. You see, with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can see how our future will look like. We can see the things that should come to us. The Holy Spirit is that one that can go to the reservoir of God and show you this is what you have. This is your portion. Look, but God has revealed them to us. The Holy Ghost is the revealer. Is the revealer of the intents of God concerning us. The Holy Ghost reveals the intents of God concerning us. He reveals it. The Holy Ghost is the man that can go behind the scenes and show you. Charlie, guy, this is how your life will look like. Hang on, stay on. This is, how you, this is what is for you. This is what is coming to you. This is what you should get at the end of the day. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. The Holy Ghost is the one that can bring hardcore facts. Hardcore truths. Hardcore evidence from God to us. The Holy Ghost is, is I always say it, that the Holy Ghost is a better search engine than Google or Mozilla Firefox. Because what? He searches what? And then he searches what? The deep things of God. The Holy Ghost shows us the depths that are in God. He searches all things. All things. Remember, I told you, he can, he can explain anything to you. Because he has the power to what? Search every matter. Search everything. Now, imagine we have a case. Two people have come. Everybody is saying, this person did this, this person did this, this one did this. How will you now rule in a matter like that? It looks like, let's do this. The Holy Ghost can reveal who is lying. And who is saying the truth. The Holy Ghost, in every matter, he can bring out what is truth in every matter. So I ask you, in an important life decision, like getting married, it's a very important life decision. Your family may want you to marry A, and you may want to marry B, and then you have a friend who says marry C. Who do you listen to? Because there are chances that if you marry one, you will offend the other party. Your family may even threaten if you go against our wish, we will not come for the wedding. We will not come for the wedding. What do you do? Your father now says, Count me out the day you go for this. Will you listen to your father? Or, and maybe your father or your, your family is doing that because of connections. They now say, How can you now marry? Hey, how can you do this? My friend. My friend, you can't do that. The day you, you make up your mind to this person, don't come to my house again. You know, fat, most fathers are like that. And then they leave the hall and go to the room. And maybe the day, the day you come back home, the day you come back home, you are coming to talk. Your father is in the hall. He sees you. He get up and go to the room. He goes to his room. And then your mother will follow. Oh, kweku, kweku. Kweku. Then your father now looks at your mother and says, talk to your daughter. Talk to your... I don't want to see her in my house again. If it's an Indian movie, they now say, Vashti. <laughs> then the father now comes. Vashti. Then the, the child, Nehi, Papa. Nehi, Papa. Nehi. Nehi. What will you do in what will you do? What will you do in a moment like that? 
What will you do if your help is not the Holy Spirit? If you have not encouraged His work in your life? Understand, the Christian life is made easy with the help of the Holy Spirit. Because if it was not so, one day Jesus would not have said to them, Jesus would not have said to them, receive the Holy Ghost. The Bible said he breathed on them and said, receive the... That is the empowerment. Then he said to them again, don't go, wait for the promise of the Father. Who is the Holy Spirit? When the Holy Ghost came down, they could go out and preach with boldness. The Christian life is made easy with the help of the Holy Spirit. So imagine that you are not helping his work in your life. You are not encouraging his work. You are not encouraging his work in your life. How then do you live? Because understand the brain power cannot dominate the world. You don't dominate your world with brain power. God has revealed them to us through his spirit. If God has anything to say, he says it via his spirit. The Holy Ghost is the one that goes behind the scenes, unlocks whatever we need to know about God, which is for us, and shows it to us. Look, for the spirit searches all things. The Holy Ghost can give you an answer on anything, any subject. Because he's, he's able to search all things. Then he's able to search the deep things of God, the hard things of God. The hard things of God. He's able to reveal that. Next verse. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him? You see, when you take a natural man, it's only his natural spirit that can know what is inside of him. Have you practiced this before? You can be speaking to yourself within without moving your mouth. Have you done it before? Like you are quiet, but you are speaking... There's, there's a spirit inside of you. Man is spirit. He said, when you take a natural man, only his natural spirit, his human spirit, knows what is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. If we are to know what is in God, then it's the Holy Spirit that can teach us. It's the Holy Spirit that can literally expose the personality, the character of God to us. The Holy Spirit is the person who can do an expose of God to us. Because he knows God in and out. He knows God thoroughly. Because he says, even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, he is able to reveal everything that is in God for us. He's able to, let me say that if God were masked, if there was a mask put on God, the Holy Ghost is able to take the mask off and show us who God is. That's what it means. If God were a mystery. Now, in Isaiah 45, Isaiah said, you are the God that hideth yourself. You are the God that hideth yourself. Oh, the Savior of Israel. You are the God that hideth yourself. That was their dispensation. You are the God that hideth yourself. But thankfully in the New Testament we have seen the mystery that was hidden before the ages. That mystery has been what? Revealed. And it's thanks to this man. The Holy Ghost makes the mystery revealed. Revealed. The Hebrew word for eternity is vanishing point. The God that lives beyond the vanishing point. Times without number. The ages without dates. The vanishing points. Vanishing point. It's amazing. The Holy Ghost does an expose on God. So that we can know who God is. The Holy Ghost is the best person to teach us the character of God. The persona of God. Who, who is God? Have you ever thought to yourself, God, where did he come from? Have you ever thought to this? Then they say, hey, you may go mad. Oh. When you think on this, you go mad. You go mad. Eh? 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 The Holy Ghost knows all these things. Because the Bible said, it is the Spirit of God who is in God that can what? Show us whatever is in God. 
whatever is in God is his spirit, is the Holy Spirit that can explain the character of God to us. Please, let's continue. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. We have received the Holy Spirit. But the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things which the things that have been freely given to us by God. So the Holy Ghost comes to, that's the same thing we are saying, comes to show us our privileges, our inheritance. Now that we are what? Sons. The Holy Ghost comes to show us the benefits that we have in God. He says, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by Without the Holy Spirit, we will not know what has been given to us by God. Without the Holy Spirit, we will not know the things that God has committed to us to enjoy because of Jesus' offering. The Holy Ghost shows us, Charlie, the man paid for this, who enjoy it? The man paid for your health. The man paid for this, the man paid for this. Without the Holy Spirit, we'll get to heaven and realize that we never enjoyed anything that truly was for us by God. So, the Holy Ghost in, in, in normal English social media terms, the Holy Ghost shows us the freebies that God has given to us. The Holy Ghost showed, it shows us tell it, brother, sister, these are the things. Oh. These are the things. These are the things. These are the things. These are the things. One day the Holy Spirit told me, when, when you are having services, encourage people to share testimonies. Encourage them. So nowadays, that's the norm. When you have a testimony and you share with me, come to church and share it. Come to church. He said, the, the more they celebrate, he said, when you celebrate me, I do more. I do more. When you celebrate me, I do more. It's amazing. You know? It's amazing how these things work. Like the simple key I just gave you. Practice saying, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for my life. Thank you. Thank you. Like, let him come to the forefront of your life. Thank you. Thank you. I have a sound mind. Thank you that I make the right decision this week. Thank you that you lead me to the right places. Like, when you, you practice this and see how your life turns out compared to the times you were not practicing it. Make the Holy Ghost feel important in your life. And see how your life comes. Compared to the times where you were just doing your own thing. And you know, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. And then the guy just thinks, Holy Ghost. That's all that is in his mind. Holy Ghost. It's, it's, it's for ending prayer. When we are praying, I will not say, Holy Ghost. Fire. To two. That's the only thing. We have not been awakened to his person. That he's a person. He's a person. I said there are some. You may have a banner like this and put a big dab on it. Put a big dab. You say, ah, now dab in oh, that's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. Jesus introduced his person to us. Who he is. He is a person. He talks. He talks. He talks. Dear Holy Spirit, I trust that you will speak to me this week. This is when you do that, you are, you are bringing him to the front of your life. You know, during the COVID, they said frontline workers. They are the people right in the heat of the thing. When you, when you make the Holy Ghost important, it's like you have brought him to the front line of your life. Front line. I trust you will speak to me. I'm going to hear your voice today. I trust you will speak to me. I trust this week I hear your voice. I trust this week every decision I have to make, you are helping me make the right one. You are helping me make the right one. You are making my life more glorious this week. And see, see how your life turns out. I said, in, if you have watched Pastor Chris for a long time, you will see that everything he does, in a small time, thank you, Holy Spirit. That's how you encourage his work. It's not any mathematics thing you have to do. You don't have to write the Y, the X. No, you have to make the Holy Ghost 
feel special in your life. You have to intentionally what make him feel what special in your life. So you see the senior man. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. They practice his presence. I know you are with me. That is called practicing his presence. You are with me. You are with me. You are with me every day of this week. You are with me. You are with me wherever I go this week. You are with me. See how your life turns out. He says that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. So we know what God has given to us with the help of the Holy Spirit. The, understand, no, the man is a helper. I don't know how I will say it again. If there's another language I will use and say so that you understand, this is a helper. Like, like, obwafo. Or your obwafo. Into obwafo or what? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Obwafo or what? No one is saying, Charlie. Boame, obwafo, boame. 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 I receive your help. I receive your help this week. I receive your help. I receive your help. I receive your help. Next verse. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches but which the Holy Spirit teaches. He said the words that we speak they are not they are not coined from man's wisdom but they are coined from the teaching of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the one backing the words. The words that we are teaching. He says comparing spiritual things with spiritual. These things we are doing and saying is the Holy Ghost giving us the vibe. Giving us the ability to talk. It's like preaching to someone. As I'm preaching to you every time, every Sunday, every Wednesday, whatever day, I just trust the Holy Ghost to help me as I'm teaching. You see, the word is just entering your heart. Have you come for a teaching service and I, the word of God was taught by me and you felt here, you went to me, you felt like I've received something. You see, it was me and the Holy Ghost in partnership. I just trusted that he will help me because you, you see, my work is not to convince you my work is to teach and his work is to use the teaching to do something in your heart find a way for the teaching have you come to church and the teaching of the word was going on and you felt like let's not close let's not close the service let's not close the service oh, can we continue this can we, it's, too, it's getting too interesting it's getting or oh, you are in a hurry to go home not a man of God jai 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 say who no no Man of God, Pastor, every time Jesus has done what my, my friend just, my friend just, there are people like that who they criticize everything. As we are even talking, they brought for crying. Yeah. <laughs> Me, I've learned to be scared of church people. Oh. They, are, they are one of the groups of people that, as we are preaching, like they, may, they may be smiling to you, but only God knows what is in their heart. They may be smiling like this, looking at your face. Yes, pastor. Yes, pastor. Yes, please. When they now go home and they remove the address, she and say, Who be an hour? They criticize everything. When you say, God bless you, so God bless you for what? So, when you go to some churches, in some churches, new, newcomers have a lot of testimonies than those who have been there for long. Because those who have been there, they have become familiar with the man of God. So, when he says, Bless, it won't bless. And they have become part of a, a gossip group. Gossip group. When the when, when the man of God does is they go and go and mark. They go and mark is when they will try two over ten. But you know the newcomer he doesn't know anything. He just comes and he's he's so ready to receive. So ready. Some anything you say they go back they go and check. Not checking to know they say. Mm-hmm. Look at his face. Shiny, shiny shoe. 
criticizing everything. But it's part of it. It's part of the work. It makes you hard. It makes you tough. It makes you tough. This work, if you are not tough, you can't do it. If you are a fiero, you are, you are but the way you soft, you can't do it. Because you encounter even people who will give to you and want to manipulate you. And you have to be fair. You say, brother, sister, a man of God said somebody came to their church and want, the person started participating in activities, gave huge sums of money. Suddenly he came to the pastor and was ordering him, do this, don't do this, do this. The man of God said, what? He said, nonsense. He now called the accountant and said, calculate all his money, send his money to him. The guy was there, he received one million ba, two million ba, three million ba. The man of God now called him. If you don't know, and you step around this place again, that will be the end. He was shocked. They want to manipulate you. It is true. Some people are not giving big. They want to money. They want you to do their bidding. If you are not firm, you can't do it. Peter said, Who should we listen to? God or you? Who should we listen to? If you are a CEO, your CEO ended at the gate. It's simple and short. It's simple and short. This, this is spiritual work. A spiritual. This is what God has said. That's what we must do. Because you know what? At the end of everything, we'll give an account. It may look like, you know, the, Jesus said, when they say peace and safety, then disaster will come. It may look like the world is becoming more enjoyable and things. One of these days, he will show up. And will stand before the man. And imagine, I'm holding my book. He's holding his book. And we are balancing. He's not balancing. And he asked me, how about this guy? How, this guy I gave to you, this lady I put in your care. How, how did you? And I'll now say, um, um, actually, um, um, pardon me, pardon me, pardon me. And I, I said, please, I need a glass of water. <clears throat> um, I'm trying to reconcile the accounts with him. And it's not reconciling. Because we'll give an account of every soul the master has committed to us. This is why I always say it. I've not done ministry before. So if there's any fooling I want to fool, it's not with ministry. Me, God, God knew me that my interest was never in Never. Not even for a moment. Never. I've never dreamt I would be a pastor. N never. I'm not part of that group that says, me, so I need me, so I need me plans. I need me plans. I remember one day we went to, the, the, we went to church. I was a Catholic those times. Went to church early morning, like this morning mass. You go very early, 6 30. You go, you are very sleepy. If you don't go, you won't eat your food. So you have to go. We went to the church, we were sitting in front. We have been annoyed from home because, like, ah, the way the sleep was sweet, fine, we have come to church. We get to the church, and then the choir is singing. And then the choir master is in front, they are going to give their offertory. The choir master is in front and they are singing Hallelujah, so above Otonium. I remember so very well. Oh, Otonium. Then, uh, me, I'm not thinking about any Hallelujah, any Otonium, nothing. <laughs> I'm just annoyed <laughs> to be here. And as if that's not enough, they are singing joyfully. I, I can't see any joy with what. I'm like, you look at these people. The moment they be very devout. And the guy opens his mouth, the choir master, as they are saying, he says, Ah, no, Pao. In my mind, I'm like, Can this guy just shut up? <laughs> I've never been one of those guys. Oh, hey, Charlie, me there. It was my desire. Never. Not for a minute. Never. If somebody had told me you will be able to teach the scripture, I will laugh at them. I will laugh at them. I will say you are joking. Maybe your, your head, something is wrong with you. Me, scripture. No, that John life, I don't want. So, to have the privilege to now enter the field and go and joke with the lives of people, count me out of it. I don't want to be part of it. If we will joke, not with the work. I can be your friend. We can talk about everything. When it comes to ministry, I don't play games. So. When we are doing the work, I don't tell you, we have to do this. Man, put feelings away. You, you can take offense and leave. That's normal. I've done it to you several times. When it comes to the work, something is not done. 
I get annoyed. I tell you, Charlie, we have to do this thing. You come to the office. When you come out, your face may change. Why, Charlie? We have to do the thing. Why didn't we do this thing at this time? You ask, say, okay. The three nights of blessing. One of the days I came, the place was not open, blah, blah, blah. I was very annoyed. I told you, when you came, I said, I'm going home. Do the service. Me, I'm going home. Ah, because the way I've prepared myself and I've fired my, you, you, what do me that? You see, if we would joke with anything, anytime I remember we will stand before Jesus, let's get this thing right. It may take so long, but it will come. It may look like, oh, it will never come, but it will stand before him and will give an account. I want to give a good account. If it's just two people God has given to me, let me be able to give an account. Let me be able to look at them on that day and say, oh, I'm glad God gave me the privilege to raise you. I'm glad I'll be so happy jumping around and on top I tell them put three meat, put three meat on my food. Because that's a successful person in the eyes of God. Let other people find Christ. It's amazing. It's an amazing thing. Money can't buy it. The joy of sharing Christ with other people. When I see some of you talk and you are able to explain some of the scriptures, I'm like, oh Jesus, this is too nice. This is too nice. It's amazing. So it's all with the help of the Holy Spirit. He's the main man running the show of everything we do. You know, there are some people there, eh, some of the things they are now doing, the Holy Ghost is just watching like this. Because there's no involvement. Nothing. Nobody involves him. It's like a showmanship. Some may introduce themselves to the people as God. And everybody is worshipping the guy. And then some to know, know nothing. Mo for most of us, the Holy Ghost is in your life. It's like, Charlie, allow me to... Ooh. Have you seen this before? Inviting somebody to your house. Bringing somebody to your house and then you give them the guest room. To stay in the guest room. And then if, if anything, you go and check on, are you okay? In the guest room. Are you okay? This is what some Christians have done with the Holy Spirit. Charlie, we are the, my church life. We are my church. See, do Sunday, Charlie. Boy, oh, you sorry. Be at my church life. And then compare that to somebody who gives the whole house. Charlie, every part of this house you are free to go. You are free to use every part of this house. You are free to do anything you want. Anywhere, the kitchen, anywhere. Just feel free. Feel at home. Feel at home. Because the Bible says our body is his temple. If your body is his temple, then submit every part of it to him. Submit everything to the man. Submit everything. Take charge of my life. Take charge. Take charge. You know, we may sing it. My lifetime, I will give God my lifetime. But many are not doing it. It's just a song. It's just a, the keyboards will follow. And then, if I give God my lifetime, He will take care of me. He will never, never let me down. I will give God my. But you know, personally ask yourself: Are you really giving your life to this man? Are you giving or you are holding back some of the things? We can't have a helper and you not receiving in help is help and you think you are you are you are being humble. No, when you don't receive the help from the helper, you are being proud. Allow the helper to help you. Allow the teacher to teach you. Give him the cortex, the full cortex of your heart. And I said, encourage his work. Now, now that we are teaching on this, encourage the work of the Holy Spirit in you. Encourage his work. Encourage it. Holy Spirit, have your way in my family. Have your way in my home. Don't make him a visitor. Don't make him a guest. Don't make the Holy Ghost a guest. 
don't make him a guest. When he wants to be body body, Jesus has paid for him to be your body body. No one want to do formal relationship. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay, please. It was on campus when the very first time in my life I ever heard the Holy Spirit speak pigeon to me. I was shocked. I said, hey, I thought you were only King James. Who? I thought you, when you come, you just say thou and things. I woke up and said, Charlie, my guy, how far? I said, hey, I sat well. Am I not hearing the voice of one demon from my hometown? <laughs> one demon from my hometown. I, hey, what? Because, you know, they have made God look too some way to us. It's like, hey, the God of the universe can't humble himself to be with man. No, 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 no. But from the scriptures we see, oh, how he loves us. How he loves us. How he loves us. Enduring the heavy Roman cross as a proof. And giving the Holy Spirit as a help. Back up, back up. You can fall on him. You can fall on him. You can fall on him for life. You can fall on him in everything. Look, 14. We'll be closing soon. 14. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. The natural man, he can't. You see, I said, you can't receive the things of God as a natural guy. He's just there. He's not born again. He can't receive. He's just there. He said the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. He can't know them because we are talking about spiritual things. Ah. Is, you see, it's the Holy Spirit that can help you believe the virgin birth of Jesus. Because naturally, ah, how can a virgin give birth? How can a virgin give birth? It doesn't make sense. You see, but if you have believed it, then know that the Holy Spirit has helped you believe this. Yes, it's the Holy Spirit. Now, it's the Holy Spirit that can help you believe Jesus rose again from the dead. These are truths the natural man cannot receive. These are truths the natural man cannot receive. These are truths the natural man cannot receive. It's the Holy Spirit that helps you become born again, even. It's the Holy Spirit. The natural man can't receive the things of the Spirit of God because they are foolishness to him, and these things they are spiritually discerned. I said, it, it, a classic example, the virgin birth of Jesus. It's only with the help of the Holy Spirit you can, you can believe this. Without the help of the Holy Spirit, there is no way you accept this as truth. That a virgin gave birth to a son who will be the savior of the world. Never. So if you have believed this now, and this is, has been hard worked into your heart, know the Holy Spirit is helping you small, small, grasp things. Next verse. We are closing. Next verse. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. Next verse. For who has known the mind of the Lord that we, he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. Who, may, who has known? Because of the time, I want to just close here. We will still continue on the Holy Spirit. I like the way I'm taking my time so we can do more. We, are, we will still be on the Holy Spirit next week. 